Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's gay. And edible. All ready. Let's meet the panel. Mm, Poppy. Charlie. Cynthia. That was cool. Morgan. And Josh. And uh, you may see that we are having some delicious ice cream today. I, I love ice cream. Uh, I personally have uh, Ben and Jerry's uh, American Dream with Stephen Colbert on the cover. This, uh, just anything from Ben and Jerry's is absolutely delicious. Uh, Charlie, uh, you've had something similar. Milk and cookies. Mm. I love cookies. I've had them before. Those are delicious. Yeah, this is very good. This is very good. I highly recommend it. Mm. Cynthia, what do you have in your cup? Mine is a melange of all three of your flavors. Oh, okay. <laughs> And that's something different. Uh, it's all frozen over what it says. Talanti Sorbetto Roman Raspberry. Ooh, I love Talanti. <laughs> I have that as well. It's so good. It's, it's delicioso. Mm, uh, indeed. The, uh, the vegan members of our channel are enjoying. Mm -hmm. uh, Keep, watch out, people. We're grown. We're taking already. over. <laughs> but you may be wondering why we're having ice cream mm -hmm. on our show. Uh, moderator, uh, Lainey. Mm -hmm. What are we going over today? Today we are discussing The Emperor of Ice Cream by Wallace Stevens. Mm. Pretty. Write out about it. I don't like ice cream. Mm. Why write about an Emperor of Ice Cream panel? Why is this Emperor the most important? Can I go first? Yeah, I'm so excited. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I do have fun. I think there is only an Emperor of Ice Cream because what's kind of how to imply that uh, there shouldn't be this like big huge scene of death because there is no afterlife kind of the, the only emperor is the emperor of ice cream because the only thing that matters is like the pleasure in the moment in life and there's no god maybe like no there was a god how do you think this would have gotten here i think this poem is arguing that I think, in all honesty i think that the emperor is a bit of a player a, a, a player <laughs> what I think he's a player. Oh, yeah, he has chocolate and vanilla. I think that... Little raspberry and I see... The Emperor of... I think Morgan makes a very good point in the way that the... You have to enjoy the life that you are given. You're not supposed to work toward the future. Life. Yeah, the, the after... It's about living in the present, not even worrying about what lies in the future. And... Ice cream mm -hmm. represents all things happy and joyful. Unless you freeze yourself. Yeah, your hedonistic pleasure is at its peak as ice cream. And oh. in the other sense, the one that is able to enjoy life's greatest pleasures, and many argue that one of life's greatest pleasures is sex. No, it's ice cream. There's a, in, uh, someone argued that the first few lines is like, uh, kind of like in a hole. Like the call the roller of big big cigars, oh, yeah. the muscular one, and bid him whip in the kitchen cups concupiscent. I don't know how to say that word. Concupiscent curds, but it's supposed to mean lust. So like, wait a minute, this is about that, sex. That word Con translates to sexual <laughs> desire. Yeah. Aww. And wenches are women with sexual desire, also known as prostitutes. Mm -hmm. maybe the so maybe they have, maybe after the ice they're cream. a little less they have the ice cream. But yeah, the emperor of ice cream is the, the dominant one in more ways than one. <laughs> I think I I'd rather have ice cream than sex. So I'm gonna flat out tell you. I don't think that's the both worlds. There once. isn't like he's really referring to any kind of like any kind of emperor. Like there is no emperor of ice cream. But I'm saying I think he's saying that like because like the first stanza he just. You know they're going to a funeral this girl's dead right and he's saying don't everyone wear your regular clothes like wrap the flowers in an old newspaper no one cares you know i'm a big sexual muscular guy I make some ice cream because let b be finale of scene so like just let her death be it like that's it the oh. only emperor is the emperor ice cream like there's no i think he's just saying there's no god i think that's what he's saying and then says it again at the end and it like kind of has it's like a lot more sad at the end because it, it describes it's it's right, it's right dead for a yeah. to me it's a very Key Westian kind of 
mm. home because I think of cigars and Cuba and because there's okay. places where they actually do yeah, ice cream. Cuban cigars. Yeah, yeah, yeah and even in, in on the sexuality's yeah. sake, they have a fully nude bar. I wrote that down. I wrote down the Ricky Weston. Yeah. Somewhere. It's a beautiful place, guys. Definitely. Yeah. True artist destination. Mallory Square, the sunset. Oh, yeah. The food? The food, Charlie, the food. He might have had some drinks. No, 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 I can't. I'm not, I can't hold my liquor. I mean, I can hold my liquor, but... You'd rather hold some ice cream. But if it's yeah. hot out, you want some ice cream. Mm. <laughs> oh, goodness, the ice cream there. <laughs> key lime pie? Oh. I've never had key lime pie. Am I missing out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? With some ice cream? Like... Oh. I'm really not a pie sip. person. I'm a cake, cookie, candy, donut. I'm shocked that you're not a pie person. I'm actually shocked that you would My mom cake actually cake has a birthday okay, pie. Like, this birthday pie? That's a nice idea. She prefers it. Like, but you know what? what? I don't understand how they have National Pie Day. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's National Pie Day. But March 14th. Yes, I know. I one four. But why can't we have National Cake Day? Cake is like this. Dull. There's probably National Cake Day, but uh, nobody there cares. Is. There might be National. Like National Donut Day. Day was last week. I love donuts. All right. There's a holiday for any food. The only difference is some are celebrated more, more prestigiously than others. Some are tastier than others. Yeah, like French fries. Oh. I love French fries. <laughs> Julian Fries Day is August 12th. What? It's exactly. It's a month and a day before my birthday. I gotta get on that. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I like food. Already. Next question. All right. Explain. Take your time. It's no rush. The lighthearted. Explain the lighthearted wording in the first stanza. Come to think of it, there really is no lighthearted oh. wording because they go, they dive in. Follow Stevens. Uh, he dives in and explains that. Uh, the the first two a uh, call the roller call the roller of big cigars the muscular one and bid him whip is very very masculine. Uh, yes, and then, it is, you know, it's fresh. And the next two lines refer to uh, yeah, it's a, a prop, a, almost as if a woman that's in the poem to fulfill the ma the male's sexual desires. I yeah. see it as very uh, reverse. Uh, <clears throat> Very, uh, I don't know if you can call it male chauvinistic, but kitchen cups, concomposite currents, it's very alliterative. It's and, and yeah, back it's suggestive. Yeah, it's, it's trying to say something. I think the first line is what are we calling the first line? Call the roller of big cigar. No, what are we saying it? What is it like? What was the question? Lighthearted or something? Oh, yeah. The, the fact, these do you ideas. Feel like it, do you feel that it's like a lighthearted wording? Or do you I feel think, there's some like interesting context? I there? think the whole first stanza is lighthearted for a reason. Because he's presenting death. I guess. Uh, uh, I think, think if the first sentence is lighthearted, as is the whole first stanza. Because he's like presenting it as something that's lighthearted, and then you're kind of like shocked to see that it's it's almost as dead, if, bro. It's almost as if death yeah. is supposed to be ignored. Uh, life is life, and life yes. remains life. People just come and go. Let be. Let be. Mm. Be finale scene. Mm. Mm -hmm. One door opens, another closes. Let it be. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And the world. Mm. <laughs> it's just everybody. It's just like. <laughs> it's very cold. The world revolves, or the world turns for those that let it turn for them. The ones that actually enjoy the work, enjoy life, are the ones that are going to get something out of it. Mm -hmm. And not thinking about anything and everything else. Uh, not, But it's almost anti-religious in a way. Oh, of course. Because yes. It is. Because people sometimes live their lives this is exactly in order to satisfy a religion when or maybe Wallace it's... Stevens says to heck with religion, in, um, in this poem at least, he okay. says to heck with religion and just do what you want and have that extra cupcake. Mm. And to heck with the virginity is uh, one of his remarks. Just because it's not allowed in the afterlife. I guess the second sentence starts in like a similar lighthearted manner. He's like kind of 
we don't really know what's going on until like the end of the poem. You know, take the dresser, take from the dresser, do the lacking, the three blah 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 blah. Um, and he says, on which he embroidered fantails once and spread it so as to cover her face. So like, even in death, he's covering this body with uh, something she used to embroider. So it's like, even what she found pleasure in in life, he's like covering that in her So even in death, I feel like that's represented like pleasure in life. Um, yeah. I think the sheet, the sheet is supposed to, uh, I know in the Ministry of Black Veil, the veil represented him hiding in sin, but there are some people that will still, uh, that they still have that shame to hide, but in this case it would be uh, the fact that there was an interference with purity, but is that why a lot of people you know, like Wallace Stevens discourage it? Maybe he's, he wants to cover her initially because it's seeing a dead person is scary, even with this mindset that he has. But then he realizes, like, it can't be scary because after he says, cover it, you know, her face, he says, if her horny feet protrude, they come to show how cold she is and dumb. Let the lamp uh, fix its beams. So we just say, I can't hide from death. Her feet are going to stick out <laughs> of the sheet that I'm trying to cover. So she's basically just covering herself because she's death is Yeah, it's almost part. It's almost purposeless to uh, ignore death because death is going to be present, but it should just be treated like any old thing. Yeah. Mm. It's just happens. Death is just death. Uh, yeah, you can't push it aside. You can't run from very, it. It's very existential. Because no matter what you do and how you live your life, we all, you know, cease to exist in one way or another. Like this ice cream. Yeah. Well, it still exists inside that belly. Oh, yeah. So this is gonna go, but there's more ice cream that's gonna come. <gasps> yeah. When I first read this poem in college many years ago, I thought, "What is this poet doing, tripping?" Because I totally <laughs> didn't understand it. He's but probably course, down the stairs. No, well, I was very well, young and naive and hadn't really lived a lot or experienced deaths. And uh, I lived a lot in you know, high school. I touch this. Don't touch it. Who's celebrating the hedonistic pleasures of youth? Yeah. If you so choose them to be. I was uh, I was thinking the same thing before I read this. I was like, oh, this poem never reminds me of it's so silly because I never actually read it or tried to read it. And I read it again like yesterday. And wow, it means something. I get it. So yeah, it totally new meaning for me. Yep. I know I I watched a video from uh, the Six Minute Scholar, uh, it's Rebecca, and she analyzed this work and had very uh, similar things to say about uh, that uh, Morgan was uh, getting to about this being uh, a death scene. And, uh, you the, can't inevitability, the inevitability that really shouldn't be taken so harshly mm -hmm. uh, as it is, but I'll leave her link at the uh, in the uh, I'll leave her link in the description section. I, I, what I wanted to say, um, we're backtracking a little bit, but with the veil, um, in a lot of churches, um, a lot of religions, the veil was, um, you were hiding. You know? It was a sign of modesty. Yeah. And um, the only time you were to take the veil off is when you were to receive Holy Communion, and I think the veil went right back on. Um, that was it. You know? I, um, I usher at my church. What I mean by that is, for those of you that don't know, Oh, I hold doors open, I help people get, um, I seat people, I greet, seat, you know, I'm the head usher at my mass, and, uh, you know, I, I come off like a goofball in the show a lot, but yeah, I'm into, I'm into, um, going to church every Sunday, but there's always that one older lady, she has to sit right in the front or right in the back, and she has the veil on, and, um, you don't, you don't say, you don't move the veil, you don't, you don't do that, you know, with men, take the hat off, yeah. I actually had to take a hat off a teenager once. I'm not going to go to that. But um, way, way, back, were, you know, way back when, uh, men would not wear hats, but women had to have their heads covered. Oh, yeah. And, and back in the... And yeah, back in the head. Well, yeah. Sorry, what's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's that's why the veil is... Um, obviously, now, when you go to church, 
It's a very old tradition that's been, yeah. you know, adopted by so many yeah. cultures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My grandma told me stories about how she would like go clean churches or something, and she would have to put like a tissue on her head so they would like let her in. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Next question. More ice cream? Mm-hmm. What do you feel the female's role is in the second stanza? Describe her disposition. I think she pretty much is the subject of. Yeah, she's. She's still uh, relevant, though. She's relevant. She's the. Uh, she's the subject to which the uh, speaker is uh, working off of. You think she is there to teach us a lesson, in a way? And what I mean by that is, um, she's. Um, what am I trying to say? This ice cream is so good, but um, she's there to teach us a lesson about humility. She's there to teach the speaker oh, a lesson. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. About yeah. the reality of death. Just her body being yeah. present. The uh-huh. fact that just it's just going to... The wheels are turning, folks. The wheels are turning yeah. very slowly, though. She was the... She, everybody has their purpose, and that's that. It's not like... Uh, as they say, um, you know, once, once my purpose is done, that's... It's yeah. not as if... Uh, it's particularly her that's going to be the uh, the subject of the rest of his life because uh, in, in, in the existential way, uh, she's just any other, she's like any other woman that took part in any other life. I'm still pondering the take from the dresser of deal lacking the three glass knobs. I'm thinking, is this like a dresser that's lacking its finials maybe? Then she had that the embroidered cloth on top of it, or I don't know. Anyway, it's another thing interesting. Uh, with, the, with the cloth, um, I am a jack of all trades. I play in a Scottish band as well, bagpipes, drums, and all that. And obviously, I'm a bagpiper, just kidding, drummer. And um, I do a lot of funerals, unfortunately, and um, mostly for police and military. But um, they always have the cloth on the uh, casket, and that's. That's uh, some type of ritual, but they will put, it's called a pall, P-A-L-L, not P-U-A-L-L. Pall bearer. Pall bearer, pall bearer yeah. Um, well, that was really crappy, crappy uh, comic relief right there, but they have the pall bearer, and they will put it on, take it off, and they will fold it. Sometimes I'll give it to the family, whatever, but, um, you know, it's very hard not to, to cry, because I have to keep, you know, military type. So I don't have to go to boot camp if they can afford it, but, um, it's very militarized. You, know, you go in, you know, and you do what you have to do. You don't make eye contact. That's the secret. You don't make eye contact with people. You do well, then you screw. So you survive the subways in New York. <laughs> yeah, I, we do play New York for a lot of police conventions, and let me tell you, I actually somebody tried hitting on me with my kilt. So I'm not going to go into it now, but huh. interesting line that struck me in the uh, the second stanza was. was uh, lines 13 to 14. Uh, if her horny feet protrude, they come to show how cold she is and dumb. Which, in one way. How are feet horny? In, um, one, <laughs> in one way, <laughs> it's saying it later. that she's in fact dead, but on the other hand, Very much the alive. way that they. No, the, way, the words that they use, it almost sounds as if uh, they make her uh, inferior. Why? I mean, now I don't want any more ice cream. Why would they use a word it like... It sounds so ugly. Well, I don't think you mean dumb. Why would they use a word like horny? I think horny is just because you're under this blanket, right? And you're, you see all these, like, curves of the body. Okay, right, the only right. thing that sticks out is your sheep, your feet look like horny. Like horny in the sense of horns. I, yeah, but I think you're just using it for plenty of other, there, there are synonyms, too, that can be... Unless, Cinnamon unless there's something... Unless there's something... Unless there's something well, I mean, lyrical. in, like... Horny, how? I don't know. And put them next to words like hold and down. Well, in an, yeah. in, in, an, so in an honest sense, there are a lot of people who do like fetishize it. feet, so it's fair to include that. They do what? Mm-hmm. Fetishize feet. Like Rex Ryan. Like, actually, I think statistically it's three out of five men. Yeah. Um, I heard that your, your like, sex sensors in your brain are really close to your foot sensors in your brain, and sometimes they like overlap and you're like, I'll yeah, take give me a feet. I'll just take a free foot massage. It's totally fine by me. Um. But I think that he writes dumb, not as this, like, I don't know, it's not supposed to be like derogatory or anything. I think 
He writes down just because she's literally empty, uh, has nothing left in mm. her. She's absolutely like dumb, like just empty of thought. And well, yeah, dumb is another. She, she used to be like a mute. yeah for mute, so yeah. she's she no longer speaks. Left, yeah. If you were to say, hey, you're dumb. Like you're dumbfounded, you know? Yeah. Speechless. Yeah. If so, you know, I had somebody, you know, and, you know, I work in schools a lot, and uh, those kids will say, oh, you're dumb. I'm like, no, I can talk. And they don't know what that means. So I'll explain it to them. So it's, then you say, you're they're, you're actually dumb. Yeah, I think it could be used in both ways. Yeah, well, you know, I'll argue that both. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not nice to say to somebody. It's the majesty of poetry is that it's yeah. so up to interpretation. Yeah. yeah. But, it, you know, don't, just don't go out there and call someone dumb. Unless they cut you off in the park, right? Oh, yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. It's Jersey. I didn't drink ice cream and cookies. Anybody have any final thoughts? Read this poem. Eat don't some read ice cream. Once and think it's a silly poem about the ice cream because it's not. It's great. I promise you. Yeah. I would suggest reading it and then reading it 10 or 20 or even more times. Maybe like three times. The more you read something, <laughs> if I may, the more you read um, or view something, the more it's going to be memorized in your brain. That's why a lot of player, um, actors, I should say players, but a lot of actors and actresses, they go through their scripts, you know, about 18 times, 20 times a day, you know? And um, act, um, even for, not just on Broadway, but uh, Big Bang Theory, you know, I'm not, I'm not promoting, I'm not um, speaking on behalf of any of these shows. But um, Big Bang Theory, um, Mike and Molly, you know, and some of the, you know, other stuff like that. They go through those scripts over and over and over to the point where they have them, you know. They, I they feel even, yeah. Yeah, I get your point. I'm going to probably read this poem about ten more times, yeah. and I may even think differently. Yeah. yeah. The more you read it, the yeah. more it's in your mind. See it from different perspectives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I really, I enjoy Wallace Stevenson's work as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a very incredible poet. Yeah. yeah. And if you're interested in picking up anything from him, uh, I would highly suggest the collected poems of Wallace Stevens. Uh, this is a collection of just about anything and everything he's written. Uh, oh, definitely sure. enough for ice cream. Uh, mm -hmm. there, I, one of his notable ones is uh, 13 Ways of Whoa. Looking at a Blackbird. Whoa. We're having fun here. Two of them, great. Mm -hmm. um, but I would definitely <laughs> turn And what is this you have? It's, it's a book, Josh. This is from Barnes and Noble. It's like seven dollars, seven ninety-eight. A treasury of poems. A what? collection of the world's most famous and familiar works. This is why you gotta shop at bookstores. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Field trip yeah. to the bookstore, everybody. You're yeah. all invited. Yeah. Let's like all meet the, up at the bookstore. It looks like it's got so great. much good so material much. too. It's funny because it, all the poems are in you know sections in the book, and this poem is in. <laughs> imagination, which oh, is funny. Imagine. There is a lot of. Lots of imagination. Of imagination. <laughs> and as, as we did, and I think it was our uh, Would You Rather episode, or not episode, or segment, um, you know, for me, this is quick and easy, cut and paste, but I'd rather have the book. Just, you know, for now, I have it on this, I'll be off the internet, but, um... It's work I said earlier. The yeah, nostalgia but, of a book. Of well. But you still, you gotta go with the book. You go, mm -hmm. you, you gotta go sit on the beach, and you know, you'll have yeah. Wi Fi, but so you, you know, yeah. <laughs> especially if it's one or more fantastic yeah. writers. Yeah, yeah think about the bargain in bulk that you're getting. With oh, oh my god, yeah. I just got this uh, Fitzgerald, one of these books from Marzal, like nine bucks. Like, uh, amazing. Uh, it is just a magnificent <laughs> looking poem, uh, especially the Barnes and Noble collection. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. It's a nice screen. All ready for now, eat some ice cream and keep reading. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining.